Hello! Uh, welcome to my channel. This is the uh, first tutorial that I will be doing. Um, I may do more in the future. Um, you, can, you can leave requests in the comments below if there are any other tutorials you'd like to see, but uh, I'm doing this one uh, as a favor to the community because I think that uh, it would be very helpful to, I guess, have a better visual example of how to package mods for Wrestling Empire. So, first things first, uh, we're going to get right into this. I already have a few links open. All the links will be in the description. So first off, what we're going to need, uh, and you might already have this, especially if you're already using mods, uh, but what we're going to start with is we're going to download R2 Modman, which is a mod manager. And uh, you also have the option of the Thunderstorm mod manager, um, but that requires the Overwolf overlay, which is something that you probably don't want to use just for the sake of this. So R2 Modman is probably definitely the way to go. So what you're going to want is... Uh, R2 Modman setup 3.1.40.exe. Now, granted, this version will probably change, you know, it's, it's, you know, because obviously this piece of software is going to get updated in the future. So that number doesn't matter as much as that, you know, you just make sure you get the setup.exe. So we're going to go ahead and going to run that. And we're just going to hit more info, run anyway. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to run it. And so. I went back because uh, I already have a config, but if you've never used this before, you're not going to have a config, so it's going to ask you to uh, select a game. And obviously you're going to want to scroll down and select Wrestling Empire. And then this is your profile selection. Um, so th these different profiles allow you to have different like mod configs, so you can use different sets of mods. I have this one called Klimpec. Uh That's just what I name my profile. Um, so let's go ahead and continue. All right, so I have a, an available mod update. Like I said, I already have a config, so I already have a bunch of mods installed. You won't. I already know that it's going to be WECCL that needs the update. I guess I'm not going to uninstall it, but so this, this mod is going to be the first one you need. And so you can find that in the online section, and it'll be pinned here. You can just click on it and then click download. I guess I will since I need to update it anyways. You also need Bepinex, but you don't have to manually download that because it's a dependency for WECCL, so it will be installed automatically. Of course, you can install any other mod you want from here. I'll go ahead and full screen. So I've made a lot of crappy little menu music mods. I've made some some good mods also, like the Realish Fed Pack, if you like uh, logos for real companies. I made a sound overhaul that's kind of goofy. Some of my friends in the modding Discord have also made some pretty wonderful mods. Like, obviously, Ingo has made some great uh, mods that are actually Bepinex plugins, so they have a lot more functionality. Um, but in terms of content mods, uh, Bull has also been making some. All these lovely people, uh, shout out to them, especially Ingo. Thanks, Ingo, for the for pretty much everything, uh, the foundational support for this entire mod community. Thanks to everyone who makes these mods. And yeah, continuing on, uh, hopefully, if you're watching this video, you can become one of those people. Uh, and we'd love to hear from you in the Discord as well, which I will also have linked below. Um, so once you get, you know, your mods installed or whatever, uh, you would use Start Modded. To play but that's just running over you know installing r2 mod man getting mods it's, it's really simple it handle you know it'll tell you whenever there's an update for a mod it's fantastic for that but getting along with the actual intent of this video i'm going to be showing you how to package a mod i'm not going to go over how to create the actual like textures or anything that i'm using i do have templates for that and i could make videos on that in the future for now i just have little crappy textures already made i haven't uploaded these anywhere or anything, but for the sake of today's video, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be packaging these as a mod. These are all just crappy little Undertaker faces. Like I said, this will be a crappy little mod. Um, I, I don't expect many people to want to use this because these textures are uh, not only bad, but they also don't function very well. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't remember seeing this little blemish here on this image, but I guess that's a thing. So, so first things first, obviously, if we go to, I'm going to go to this. So also, once you have uh, R2 Modman, you can also just use the Thunderstore website to download mods. And like, let's say I click on WECCL and I click Install with Mod Manager, it's going to open and install in R2 Modman automatically. Now, if the, if it's your first time using it, um, your browser should ask you for permission to allow it to open uh, in the app. And of course, you know you're just going to want to accept that. And then you don't have to do it the first time. It should just be automatic from then on. So if we look at the WECCL content loader uh, page here on Thunderstore, which this is the same readme as on the GitHub page, 
Um, it explains, you know, pretty much everything you need, especially in terms of how to name content, how to structure your directory for your files, all of that good stuff. Meta files, if you want to change like the default skin tone for, I guess, like a, a face or any other like skin texture, um, that will change the the uh, the default skin tone for it so that everything looks cohesive and you don't have to like toy with or fight with rather uh the game trying to get the proper skin tone continue on so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be adding these we're not going to be replacing anything in my honest opinion unless you have files that need to be replaced i wouldn't suggest replacing them like for instance i have menu music mods those require overrides those require you know file replacements to function because there's no way currently at least to add on to that first things first i've just got these laying in a little folder called taker faces because we love the taker faces we're already in the take your faces thing, so we can actually just go ahead and make this the folder. So within whatever folder you have your content in, you're going to want to make for add content, you're going to need an assets folder. The way the content loader loads them, these need to be named with the net, like the texture type in front of it, or they need to be contained within a folder and then they can just be named whatever. Uh, I prefer the folder method because I just love organization, but this mod loader does not discriminate. Anything that is placed and is named right will function. So we're going to go into this folder, and since these are faces, we can see here that we have a few uh, different types of face textures. There's face beard, face female, face male, and face mask. Now obviously what we have are male faces, so we're going to make a folder called face male, and then we're going to go back, we're going to grab our files, and I'm going to do control X, which is the cut shortcut, and we're going to paste them inside face mail. And so now the actual content portion is done. This video is assuming you already have the content that you want to, you know, place. Um, so, you know, we went ahead and did that. So now what we're going to need is, let's see, if you go to developers on the Thunderstore website, there is the package format docs. And this actually lays out everything that you need for the mod to function properly and be distributed or and actually to even be allowed to be uploaded to the Thunderstore. I think it's pretty good at explaining what you need. However, uh, you do want to make sure that the file extensions are case sensitive. They need to be lowercase. Um, that's something that I ran into with the change log myself. We're just going to go ahead and be precise for the sake of it, you know, so that everything works. Before I dig into this, I do also want to mention there is an example mod that Ingo has made. I will link to that. You should be able to create your mod just fine, uh, just copying, you know, what I do here. First things first, we're going to need an icon. We're going to need a readme. We don't need a change log. Um, you, you will want one for any mod that you plan on updating, but if you don't plan on updating a mod, you don't need this, and you don't need it for the first version regardless unless you just want to create it ahead of time and explain, you know, I guess some stuff that's in the first version, but I would, you know, I would, I would assume that that's probably already covered within the scope of your mod in terms of, you know, like the readme and stuff. The most important file is going to be the manifest. The readme is important for, you know, explaining what the mod is, any quirks, anything, especially if you, you know, if you're not making a content mod, if you're making like a, an actual plugin for Bepinex, you will obviously want to explain the functionality a little bit. The icon is also necessary just because it's pretty. When you're scrolling through mods here or even in, you know, the mod manager, you want something to look at, you know, to give people like a, a quick visual indicator. And it is required anyway, so of course we're going to need to do that. I don't have an icon ready for this, so what we will do is... Let's see, what is the resolution on these? 512 by 512. Okay, so we will scale one of these down for the icon. Uh, and I will do that in GIMP in a moment. Again, first things first, uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to manifest. However, um, what is really important is this assets folder or overrides or any actual content needs to be inside a folder called plugins. This is what's going to host all of the actual content. We're going to put assets inside there. And now anything that is in this directory with plugins is going to be, you know, all the, the, necess the necessities for the mod managers and Thunderstore. We're going to create a new text document. And we're going to call this manifest, and we're going to change the TXT to a JSON. Yes, we do want to change it. If you don't see the actual file extension, like the TXT, to change it, you may have the default settings in Windows, and I would recommend changing that real quick, and I'll show you how to do this. So I, I, I use Windows 11, and I have the newer tab file explorer, but the, the process should be the same in file explorer regardless. You're just going to want to go to your uh, options and view, and then there should be an option to hide extensions for known file types. Uh, this will be enabled by default, and as you can see, I have it disabled. So you, you, know, you just want to make sure that it's unchecked. 
I'm going to click apply just because I did it real quick just to you know show you. And then you should be able to see file extensions. This is going to be a lifesaver if you're playing with files like this. I mean, chances are if you're watching this video, you probably already know that. But don't feel bad if you don't. You know, everyone has to learn. Like I said, it's something you definitely want. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to open Notepad++. I already have it running. This is probably the absolute best text editor in terms of being lightweight. This this is a very no-nonsense text editor. And when I say that, it, it is you know worth having over Notepad because it has syntax highlighting, which means you know it's going to make creating a JSON file was a lot easier because it's going to give us highlighting to show us like like what the different parts of the JSON are. So obviously we're going to have like keys and then we're going to have their actual like values. Uh, and what I mean by that is so like name, description, all of this, these are keys and then the value is going to be what is actually inside them. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to start the uh, manifest.json. All right. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to start with a set of curly brackets. So then we're going to hit tab here, um, and then we're going to do name, in quotations, it has to be in quotations, colon, and then space, um, and then in quotations again, we're going to put the name of our mod, and we're going to name this one Crappy Taker Faces. And so normally when I name my mods, I'm, I'm about to actually change how I do this. And that's what I'm about to explain. So normally I just name them like this with no spaces. Thunderstore is going to require that for the name of a mod, if you want spaces, you're going to want to use underscores to represent the spaces. And now this is this is necessary. As you can see here, it says uh, name of the mod, no spaces. Allowed characters are A through Z, uh, lowercase and capital. Uh, your normal zero through nine Arabic numerals. And then... The underscore and it even shows an example here you know using the underscore for the space uh so we are going to have spaces we're just going to put those underscores and then this is extremely important because a lot of people miss this we need a comma here and then we're going to hit enter and now we're going to do description and for the description this this is allowed to have spaces obviously that would you know it'd be really annoying to write an entire description uh if we had to use underscores for every space, I mean, it's doable, but it, uh, it would be annoying. Um, but we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to describe this as a few crappy Undertaker faces for a tutorial. LOL. Just so, you know, people aren't too uh, pissed about this being a terrible mod, because it absolutely is going to be. Another comma. Like I said, that's very important. We need the commas. And as you can also see, Notepad++ is uh, automatically indenting for us. That's wonderful. Uh, VS Code is a little bit uh, more intuitive in this regard, in my opinion, but Notepad++ will get the job done. And if you if you created a new text file in Notepad++ and you didn't create one beforehand, then make it a JSON like I did. Actually, wow, we don't even... Okay, so we don't have syntax uh, highlighting. So that is something we want. Uh, and you know what? The reason we don't is because I just realized I'm a clown. I'm not even editing the existing JSON. Okay, so, well, that, all right, we're going to open this up and we're just going to copy and paste everything. I bet you it will actually function uh, like I mentioned. Okay, so um, next up we need version number. And I'm, I'm sorry for making this tutorial so convoluted. Um, hopefully you're sticking with me. I will try to edit this as much as possible so that it's not as much nonsense because I really am taking my time. but. Uh, so for this, we're going to do 1.0.0. And now this uses the semantic version format. Uh, as seen in this example, it's going to need three different numbers uh, separated by periods. And what these numbers actually mean within uh, semantic versioning is, so the first number, now this won't be as important for content mods, but it is advisable to still kind of follow this if you can. In my opinion, I know that, you know, content is a little bit different than actual like uh, software and, and what it entails. What we're going to do is we're going to follow it anyways. This first number represents a major change, as mentioned here. And a major change is any change that breaks existing functionality, or not necessarily breaks, but makes, makes uh, whatever piece of software or content you're using incompatible with prior versions. The second number here is going to be minor. And this is going to usually be used for like feature updates. 
you know, anything that is still compatible but adds new functionality. And the last one is patch, and this is usually going to be for smaller fixes or smaller additions. That's how this works. You you really don't need to worry about that though. I'm just explaining what semantic versioning is, and to be honest with you, the actual definition is probably a little bit better at explaining it. So this is similar to what I said, but yeah, major incompatible API changes, minors when you add functionality in a backwards compatible manner, and then patches when you make backwards compatible bug fixes. So Pretty close to what I said. Let me go back to Notepad++ and actually let's get this tab back. Now what we're going to need is we're going to need another comma. Those commas are important. Dependencies. This is probably the second most important part of this manifest. It's all going to be necessary, obviously, but what this actually does, this is going to allow us to choose our dependencies for our mod. So for any mod that's a content mod, you're going to need W-E-C-C-L. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, first I'm going to indent to make it look prettier. Uh, we're going to go to Thunderstore, and whatever mods we need for our mod, we're going to click on. And then we have a dependency string here, and this dependency string is what we want. This is what we can copy here, and then we can paste it here inside quotations. And, well, actually we don't need a comma because this is going to be the only dependency. but if we had dependencies, you would need a comma. The way JSON works is you need a comma until you're on the last, uh, the last piece of whatever object you're working on. So, you know, like I said, because it's the only entry, we don't need a comma. That's something you need to keep in mind. And again, we're going to need a comma after this ending bracket here. You're going to want to use the brackets to list your dependencies. This is inside an array, essentially. After that, we're going to need... What's up? We're going to need... Well, website URL is actually optional. Um, However, we're going to throw it in there anyways. Uh, when I say it's optional, I think it might actually... Okay, so it is required, but the actual value doesn't have to contain anything. It can be an empty string, which is just, you know, two quotations with nothing in between. So you don't need an actual value, but you do need the key there. Also, I, I messed up. We need the other quotation. That's my bet. So this is everything that's required, but I am going to mention an additional option you can place in here. I don't think Thunderstore uses this yet. Uh, my understanding is that they plan on using this and that is namespace, but it is handy for mod creators. I'm personally not knowledgeable enough to, I guess, fully explain why, but if other people are doing it and, you know, it makes sense and Thunderstore plans on supporting it in the future, I'm not sure how they plan on going about that, but might as well go ahead and make our mod boards compatible. So for namespace, I'm just going to use my name. I'm just going to use Clem which is also the name that I use on Thunderstore. Obviously, like I said, we need a comma after every one except the, the last one, which is going to be website URL. And then once we have everything we need, we're going to want to create a, another curly bracket here at the end. And that's going to signify the end of our JSON here. So that's our manifest. This, sh this is done now. So now we need to, like I said, we need an icon and a readme. So next up, we're going to create Read me in all caps, and we're going to change the file extension to lowercase, and this is very important, md. And this is a markdown file. So I'm going to bring Notepad++ back here. I'm going to drag read me in here. That's something you can do. You can just drag your files in, pop them open without having to manually select them through the file selection uh, dialog. And now we're going to put... Oh, wow, this syntax highlighting is not great for this. You cannot see this. Let me change the style. Hold on. Okay, so... Okay, so we do have a markdown preview on the website. You can use this as well as the manifest validator to make sure that your uh, file is functional. That, that might be helpful. Uh, let's see. We could also open up a markdown cheat sheet of some sort. Um, here's the actual markdown cheat sheet. I will actually link this in the description now that I think about it because this will be helpful if you've never used markdown. For your headings, you will use the pound sign. Uh, bold, you need two asterisks. For italic, you need one asterisk. So we're going to go back to our readme, and we're going to write an informative little readme. So, like I said, we're going to put the pound sign. You need a space after it. Uh, this is important for markdown, otherwise the file will uh, not render properly. And we're going to put the name of our mod as the first heading, which is going to be the H1 here. This is going to be the single pound. This is going to be the biggest heading. We're going to name this Crappy Taker Faces. Uh, just making sure the name was right. Um, 
my understanding is that in Markdown, uh, between every heading and the content, you want a single empty line. Uh, this is like some standard. This isn't required, but it's. Uh, I, I use a I use a plugin in VS Code for uh, for for vetting uh, the JSON and or not the JSON, the Markdown file uh, based on some standard, and this is you know how it uh, parses it. So I just do it for the sake of it. Um, might as well conform to the standard, make it look prettier, I guess. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to type our description here. Now, this doesn't need any type of quotations or anything. Markdown is a completely plain text-based format that renders to HTML. Uh, it's very handy for that reason. So we're going to write, this is a collection of really awful Undertaker faces. I honestly... Hold on. Don't recommend it. But it's here for educational hold on, purposes. This mod was created for my tutorial on YouTube. We'll throw a few exclamation marks in there just because. And now, so if you need subheadings, you would use uh, two. And if you want an even smaller heading than that, you could use three pound signs. But we don't really need all of that. I'm just going to put my YouTube channel as a subheading just to show off subheadings. Uh, you also actually should be using an empty line at the end of your markdown file. Um, so I'm going to put the link to my YouTube channel here. And this should be a good readme. We're going to want to save. Uh, I usually just use the shortcut Control S to save my files, but you know, some people are more comfortable clicking file and then clicking save. Whatever works for you. So we have both these files done. So if you make a change log, the format of the change log will also be in Markdown. So it'll essentially be the same as this, but I would recommend using a different subheading for each version. And you could just put like change log as the uh, the main heading if you were to do that. But we're not going to worry about that because this is a you know little mod that won't get updated. So now we have everything we need except an icon. Your icon needs to be 256 pixels by 256 pixels uh, width and height. Now it's properly sized. I'm going to export this now. Obviously, you don't have to use GIMP for this. Uh, if you're familiar with, you know, making images, you will not have to worry about this process. But for the sake of making a complete mod within the scope of this video, I'm going to make the icon. And we're going to need it to be named icon.png. You're going to need to place this uh, inside your parent folder here, uh, beside the plugins folder, along with the readme and the manifest and all that jazz. Icon.png, all lowercase. I'm going to go ahead and export it. We should have an icon. So what you're going to want to do is you're not going to want to you you're not going to want to right click on the the folder. You want to be inside the folder. You want to select every file that's going to go into your mod. You're going to right click, and then you can go to for me it's Nana Zip, but if you're using Windows 10 and 7 Zip or whatever, uh, you know you would get this menu. Uh, it might look a little different, but you know you'd use Nana Zip or 7 Zip, and you'd you would do Add to Archive. And then, you know, the name .zip. It has to be a .zip, not a not .7z, or not a .rar, or whatever. Um, and this should be a functional mod now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Thunderstore, and we're going to click Upload. And now this is where you're going to upload your mod. And I'm just going to drag it. You can also click to choose, but I'm just going to drag it. That's the easiest way. And for the team, we're going to do Clem. Obviously, you're not going to, because this is my team. But you will have a team of your own. Uh, named after yourself, or actually, you might need to create one. Uh, but I, I just named after myself. This is also going to be like the username that is displayed under your mod. So if you, if you're a solo project or solo modder rather, uh, you might just want to name it, you know, whatever your name is or your preferred, you know, display name. Or if you're a part of a bigger team, you can use that. Um, for communities, you just want Wrestling Empire. You don't want to, you know, add it for any other game. Just Wrestling Empire. And then for categories, you're going to want to choose whatever applies. Uh, so for me, we're going to do textures. Because um, this is, you know, this is a pack of faces. Let's see. We're not, we're not going to do characters. Uh, technically, I guess costume would make sense. So we will use that um, because the way uh, all the textures are loaded, they're kind of all treated as costumes as far as I know. So we'll just do that. And then I usually add mods and only because... Um, Initially, I thought maybe that would be better reserved for like actual 
uh, C sharp mods or, you know, Bepinex plugins. But in my opinion, it's also good for differentiating between what is a mod and a mod pack, you know, which is a, just a mod that, ha that depends on other mods. Um, it doesn't contain any content. It just basically tells the mod manager to install a bunch of other mods. And that's also how you would create a mod pack. Um, you would just create a mod like we just have, but instead of adding like a plugins folder, you would just put the dependencies in your manifest and you wouldn't have any actual content. You just need your manifest readme icon and all the mods you wanted in the pack inside the dependencies in your manifest. So for dependencies right here, you know, if we wanted to make a mod pack, we'd put a comma and then we put the other mods we'd want, you know, with their dependency strings. Uh, just like we checked earlier, you know, you would go to the mod on Thunderstore and then you would look for its dependency string. I will do that again real quick just to remind you. You want to click on it, find dependency string, copy this, put it inside quotations in your dependencies. So we're going to go back and we're going to go ahead and upload this. There's an NSFW check here. These are just Undertaker faces. As horrendous as they look, they're not technically NSFW. So we'll go ahead and submit. There we go. Success. It is listed. We now have, we have created a mod, we've packaged it, and we have uploaded it. Now it is on Thunderstore. Now, if we click, as soon as we upload, it won't appear usually. Okay, well, it did. Usually, it might take a second to upload. Um, and that's okay. Just give it a minute, check again. Uh, and usually in R2 Modman, it will take even longer. So I'm actually going to go ahead and close that. So R2 Modman doesn't auto-update by default. So we're going to go ahead and just close it and reopen it. Um, you can refresh it inside the uh, mod manager by going to settings and then choosing fresh online mod list. Okay, so I, I, I kind of forgot to consider something while I was doing this tutorial. This is this is going to be really important. I would assume that you know what you're doing. You already have your content made. And as long as you follow the structure that I showed you uh, with WECCL with, in terms of the naming scheme, all that information is available uh, on the page on Thunderstore. It's available on the GitHub. And of course, any help you need will be available in the modders Discord, which again I will be I will have linked below. Uh, even if you don't need help, you can always join for you know, a sense of community. There's a lot of lovely people in there. But as long as you follow this, your mod should be functional. However, in the case you just want to check, which in my opinion is always good practice. Um, let's say, let's say you know I don't know that this mod is going to work. What you can do is after you package everything into a zip file. Before you upload it, you can go into R2 Modman, into the settings, and you can scroll down and click Import Local Mod. And then you can select File, and we're going to go to the zip, and we're going to click uh, Select. And usually it doesn't detect the author. I'm not sure why that is, but we're just going to go ahead and put my name in there. And we're going to click Import Local Mod. And what that does is, without any extra effort, we now have it installed. Now we have this, we're going to Start Modded. Now, the first time you start with mods, um, it should cache them. So the second time you boot, this will be much faster. Obviously, I have a lot of mods installed. Okay. So if this is your first time using R2 Modman uh, with mods, uh, the content loader will prompt you. If you have multiple override mods, it will prompt you to sort them. So this is the order of priority for your mod. So whatever mod is you know, number one is going to be the highest priority and the priority decreases. And what this means is that any mod that has a lower number and a higher priority than another mod will be loaded on top. Uh, so basically, I have a bunch of mini music mods here. As you can see, the game is already playing the GoldenEye mini music and that's because it has the highest priority right now. But what if we want to play, let's say the SmackDown 2 mini music? We will click on the left side and it will slowly move up one by one. Bam, it's in the high spot now. And the order only ultimately matters to what you want loaded. Uh, just anything that you want, you need to have a higher priority than anything else that will also, you know, replace the same files. But this is just for overrides. It will only show override mods in this list. So, you know, if you have a ton of extra content mods, you don't have to worry about those. It only shows overrides. And once we're done, we can click proceed. Or if you don't want to see the screen again, you can click proceed and hide. Now, as far as I understand, this screen should only appear if you have new override mods, I believe. Um, even if you don't choose to hide, if you choose to hide it, it will not show up again regardless. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and click proceed and we shouldn't get that again unless uh, we add new override mods. And we're gonna go to the editor and we're going to go to Scott Norton shirt. And we're gonna go to costumes, face. And I have a lot of faces, so we're just going to now the actual order that these are numbered um, isn't guaranteed, it, it can 
load a little differently each time, or maybe not each time, but depending on like your mod config. So I'm gonna scroll through just to make sure that we find the faces we're looking for. There we go. There's our mod. Our faces are loaded. Everything is functional, and once we've tested that, we can close the game. I don't want to save with those faces, so I'm just going to Alt F for it. And that should be everything. Uh, you should know how to test your mod. You should know how to create your mod. You should know how to upload your mod. Um, if you need any additional help, like I said, uh, you can join the Discord. Um, hopefully, I, this video was helpful. Um, again, if not, uh, you can always ask for help in the Discord. And uh, if you need to, um, you can ask for help in the comments as well. Um, but but more importantly, uh, any suggestions you have for any future tutorials, you can also leave in the comments, or you can just let me know in the Discord. Uh, whatever you like. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this helped you out, and you know, like and subscribe if you'd like to. Um, thank you so much.